Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, ScooterWest.com. Uh, today I'm going to go over the belt on the Sprint and Primavera. Uh, pretty straightforward job for any home mechanic. A couple special tools you need to have on hand to do this job. Uh, one thing about this scooter, this is my buddy Christian's scooter. He rides it really hard. It's got a cylinder kit on it. So I warned him. I said, the belt's going to, you're going to be lucky if it lasts the service interval, interval on this. On the 150s, Piaggio recommends you change the belt every 6,000 miles. Well, since he's got a cylinder kit on this and he rides it pretty much all the time on the freeway as fast as this thing can go, guess what? It's almost 7,000 miles the belt broke on him. Um, I haven't had this belt cover off, but I know that's what the issue is. And I'm going to show you what it looks like taking apart a belt or doing a belt job with the catastrophe of a broken belt. Um, you get a range of nothing's damaged to sometimes where I've had the belt pretty jammed up and you really have to take it apart. So we'll see what we got because I haven't had this part. Kind of excited. See what kind of good little treats we're going to have drop out of this belt cover. So here's basic tools you need to do the belt job alone without taking apart the uh, driven pulley and re replacing the grease in the seals. You need some sort of eight millimeter driver to get all the um, belt cover bolts off. Also makes the job a little easier by having an eight millimeter wobble or you could just use a small ratchet. Um, got a power driver, you don't necessarily need something like that. A regular ratchet works just as well. Uh, many of the fasteners found on these new Vespas are Torx, mostly T25, T30. You're gonna need a Phillips driver and that's the number two. I tend to always have this on me that has all three of those fasteners on there. Um, if you're going to reuse the belt, you may need a dial caliper to uh, measure the width. Generally, you're going in there to replace the belt or the roller, so not really needed for the most part. You're going to need a square, just a piece of 60 grit sandpaper, scuff up your, um, your pulleys, cut the zip tie with that. You'll need a zip tie. Needle nose helps pull the screws out of the air box or you can use a magnet. And most important, both the center, center nuts on both the driven pulley and the dr drive pulley or variator are 19, so you need a 19 millimeter socket. And I got a torque wrench right here that goes up to 100 foot pounds. Got 62 foot pounds is the highest you're going to go. Um, the clutch holder, this is a specialized Piaggio tool. I think it's part number uh, ETC, or no, uh, tool ETC, something like that. Uh, we'll tag it in the video. Uh, this is the original Piaggio one. The one we sell is pretty much identical to this. Uh, the tool to hold the barrier, that's very important to have um, to do this job. It's Tool ETV01, and it's a specific tool for the th new three-valve motor. It includes the screws and everything to do it. This is the factory tool right here. Pretty much works the same way. The only difference is this costs like about 15 times more expensive than that tool. So you don't necessarily need this. It doesn't work any different. Going off to if you're going to rebuild the clutch assembly, tear the clutch all the way down, you're going to need a large 34 millimeter socket. This is typically a front wheel drive um, axle socket you find at an auto parts store. Have a mallet here, flat, flat plate screwdriver, pry the seals out. I use a small pick to kind of massage the seals back in. Um, you can have some sort of a metric measuring device to measure the free length of the, um, the spring. Got a wooden block to kind of support the clutch. I have a blow gun, which you don't necessarily need. You can definitely need lots of these rags. Sorry, that's a dirty one. And brake parts cleaner. It can be any brand, O'Reilly's, Walmart, whatever. They all work the same, just some type of solvent stuff that cleans parts nice. All right, off to the parts. We're gonna go ahead and replace the belt. Part number in the belt is B016183. There's the original factory belt. We do have Melosi belts available. Various rollers. I have the scooter we're putting in. It's got a Melosi kit set up, and I stick with the, the, the 12 gram weights. If you have a stock engine and just want a little bump, 12.5. And we have so many. This is like a, probably our most popular item of all the Melosi stuff. Everybody orders these because it's like such a substantial upgrade over the, the stock weights that weigh, I think they're 
three grams more, or three and a half grams more. Here's your stock weights. We do have those available if you want them. Only advantage of stock weights, they are a little more durable than the Melosi ones because of the two side design. They tend to hold up a little longer. You need three of the variator um, bushings or whatever you call those little shoes, a couple different names for them. And if you're rebuilding the clutch, you're going to need two of the oil seals, give you the part number there, and you'll need two of the O-rings. These are 289, 804. They're identical to the ones found on the 50cc uh, motors from Piaggio. Not sure why they went to a smaller size, but they work pretty well. So definitely want to replace those if you're taking the clutch all the way down, or the driven pulley, that is. All right, I'm going to start from the front and work towards the back of dismantling the belt cover pretty much to gain access to the transmission. Uh, first of all, you got to get this little cover off. So you're going to need a T30 driver. And I'm cheating, I'm using like power tools here. It makes everything a little bit faster when you're doing this kind of stuff day in, day out. Pop the single Torx screw out. And you want to lift your floorboard and this little corner piece comes out. Make sure you put the screw back because I know this little piece goes bye-bye when you um, uh, don't bother putting the screw away. Uh, next, you would take this little rubber boot off. Zip tie has already been cut. I already cut it earlier and then I thought, oh, this is cool. I want to do a video of this thing because I know there's like some extra treats in here. Get the zip tie off. I already cut it off. Disconnect that. You can leave this in place, but I'll just show you how it comes off. T25. If you want to take it off, it comes in quite useful. Like if you want to uh, turn the engine over to do um, a valve adjustment, it would be useful to take this little cover off. So there's your cover. You can see a little O-ring in there. Never really need to mess with that. Put the um, screws in there so you don't lose them. Uh, pretty much all the modern Vespas, you're gonna have to loosen the air box. Um, all the 125, 150s, uh, 50 cc's, just two screws to hold the air box. Everything that's 200 cc to 300 cc's on the Vespas, they're gonna have three screws. So pretty much the screw right there is a Phillips. And I'll, both, both identical on this. And when you pull it off, you're gonna see there's a flat washer and the star washer. Make sure those are there. A lot of times I see the air boxes uh, missing a screw or two, or sometimes they don't have anything holding them, so you got to replace them. Uh, that other screw, you'll need a needle nose to pull that out, or a magnet works just as well. Pull that screw out. Again, set those aside. You can push the air box up. Now you can gain access to these upper screws. You can see this bubble's kind of oily. I'm not going to do the oil change, but I'll probably drain it. I'll show you that when we have the belt cover off, because otherwise it's going to, you know, pour all over the belt cover here. Next, you're going to need a flat bladed screwdriver to pop the little chrome cap off. Uh, pretty similar across the board. I notice this cap is kind of a little funky, not popping off kind of easy. And one of these little tabs is off. And here's the first telltales that it's got a broken belt. It's got this fuzz coming out of it. Ignore the dirty oil, that's just coming from the air box. Like I said, this customer, Christian, or he's my good friend actually, we ride in Mexico a lot. He rides this thing so hard, and when you ride these things uh, pretty much full throttle all the time, they'll, they'll tend to build up some of the oil in the air box. It's kind of a good thing to know, because some customers I have come in, they're a little alarmed that there's some oil weeping out. I say, hey, just wipe it off. It's not that big a deal. It's just the, um, the way the um, air box work. It, it collects the oil. So, um, One last thing to take off here. You can use the variator tool. And this is, I think it's ETC. There's the clutch holder I meant. That locks it in. This is the original Piaggio one. The Bizzetti one we sell where it's you know, pretty much identical. You can use a 19 millimeter socket and a wrench to break it free. Um, I'm going to cheat once again and use the air tool to zip it off. Interest to get this done quick. So pretty much hold that in there. Kind of even an air tool you could probably do without this, but it's a good idea to have that tool when you, um, you know, retort that to the factory spec. So you got the nut and this little black flat washer, and that's identical on pretty much all the Vespas. They've been using the same arrangement. The 153 valves, they use a little bit thinner nut, same pitch, but 
keep that in mind. Do I have all those parts available if you end up messing them up, losing them? Not really any reason for them to fall apart, but people lose them, so. All right, so the belt cover is retained by 11 six millimeter uh, screws. Uh, they're all identical length. On some models, they have one screw that's a little longer, you know, but the three valve engines, they all use the same length. But there's a couple things that are also bolted to the belt cover that are critical. Um, in the interest of speeding things up, I got this power driver. I'm gonna start with the one in the front. So zip that one off, first screw. Not worry about the size. Very important, there's a ground strap. Gotta make sure you put that back on when you're um, reassembling it. Uh, the next one's a difficult one to get to. Um, I don't wanna use a tool like this and ride against the paint. Um, you can get creative if you have a little ratchet at home. Another way is if you have a wobble, like a wobble eight millimeter. Yeah, it's a, kind of a more of an expensive socket. Don't necessarily need it, but there's other creative ways to uh, remove this single fastener. It's a little difficult to gain access to. All these are pretty straightforward. And it's not too critical. It's not like a critical assembly that had, you know, you could just kind of go through them. Sometimes when you take assemblies apart that have multiple screws, you want to do them in a, a zigzag or a crisscross pattern, but eh, no big deal here. Maybe when I torque it, I'll show you how I do that. Um, all right, so back down here, there's, you got the vent hose for your uh, gear case. And this last one is a little bracket for the rear brake cable. And they'll just hang right there. They're not gonna go anywhere, same with the ground wire. Um, now the belt cover's ready to remove here. So this one's nice and easy. Sometimes on scooters where they're a little rusty, they'll, you know, or out in the weather more, this will be stuck on there. And these little tabs, you could use a slide hammer or even a long punch from through the wheel. And you give it a, a couple light taps, you know, right here, here, back here, and that will be enough to free the belt cover. But luck, luckily this bike's pretty new and nothing's really that rusted up. Um, I'm gonna pull the belt cover off and there's gonna be some surprises in here. I already see them already falling out. I'm gonna tip it out and see what we find here. Oh yeah. There we go. So where's the belt? Oh, it's all wrapped up in the clutch right here with all the fuzz as well. So you can see the belt is really stuck in this pulley. You probably pull it all out, but I'm gonna take this whole pulley apart to inspect it and possibly replace the seals, you know. But there you go. All right, so now we got the front pulley that we need to dismantle. Uh, it was the rear pulley came right off because the belt was broken, but normally you need to remove the front pulley to disengage the clutch so you can pull the, um, the clutch and driven pulley off as well. Uh, the best way to lock this up is never wanna, you know, jam these, the fins up with a screwdriver or something. Those things are real fragile. There's a specialized tool that we sell and it's a lot cheaper than the factory tool. It's part number tool ETV01 and it's a specialized tool that engages these two little uh, square slots right there. So you gotta turn, you know, pretty much index it so the tool lines up with this bolt hole and the bolt hole back there. So I already turned that over, put the screws in, put these spacers, same right here. So once you got it engaged, you'll be able to kind of manipulate the tool right into, into the place and line it right up with those two slots. And that essentially locks up the, um, the pulley so you could torque that center nut. Or if you're using a standard wrench, you could loosen that, that center nut. So, and you don't need to get, I mean, these are Allen, five millimeter uh, headed Allens, so you could just tighten them, but you know, they're hand tight, the thing's locked up enough to zip it off. Do, do wanna make sure it's tight enough that it doesn't slip out, you know, and damage the pulley. So have this on 19 millimeter socket here. Pull the nut off, get your tool out of the way. 
And again, with the impact, you could have cheated and just impacted, you know, against the, the, the resistance of the engine, it would have just spun that nut off just as well. Uh, there's a couple washers that have a particular order. This is a domed, uh, I think it's called a Belleville washer or something. It's got, kind of got a dome to it. So the dome faces out. And you can kind of see the wear marks from the nut. So that's a good telltale of how it goes back in. Or I always carry Sharpies on me. I don't know how this goes, but you could write out on it or something. Something to remind yourself. Then you got a thin inner washer. So, you know, inside. You know, I just recognize them from pull them apart. Same, same identical design as the GTV. So you got the nut, all the washers, pulley comes right off. And it should come right off the splines, double check the splines, slip right off without issues, no big deal there. I'm gonna set that aside, that's your fixed half drive pulley. You have another washer that sits in between, pull that out, you see the variator push right in. Sometimes when the belt breaks, the rollers will get all out of whack in there, but they still seem like they're all in place. They're not falling out. I'm going to pull this, um, this slide bushing out. We're going to clean that and get your pinkies or something back there. And I'm just doing this. If, you could, if it's not too stuck on the splines, you could just kind of rock it off. You know, it's kind of tight clearances. The reason I'm doing this so all the guts of this variator don't just fall out all over the place and you can kind of get your, your fingers in there. So you got this ramp plate. It's got three of these little bushings I'm gonna replace. Kick those off, I don't care about them. I'll replace them. Typically you do that every time. Uh, since this bike's all kitted out, it's got Melosi um, 12 gram rollers in it. You know, sometimes I use 12.5, but the 12 grams work good for this setup. They're still in quite good shape. Um, you know, you can see a couple minor flat spots, you know, but typically these rollers, you know, they'll last about what a belt lasts for these Melosi rollers. The factory rollers, they'll last a little bit longer than the belt is what I've, I've found. Um, I think I'll reuse these, but we have these rollers available. And if you're, if you have a stock bike, put the 12.5s in there and make the, the scooter so much quicker than with the stock ones. These things are kind of slugs with the stock rollers, but doesn't really affect that much mileage. Put 12.5s in there if you got a stock bike. Like I said, this one's tricked out, so it's got um, the um, 12s in there, and that's why I kind of determined worked the best when I played around with it. Uh, make sure all these, the cages aren't scored up or damaged. Sometimes the metal part of the roller will come out and damage these. Same with the bushing. Um, if there's a specification for this, just put the, the, the pin in there. And it shouldn't have hardly any rock and just slide in there freely. This pulley's still in good shape. You know, there's no ridges on it. Maybe at 30,000 miles, might be a good idea to change it. There's, but it's definitely reusable and we'll pretty much clean up this belt mess and go through the driven pulley and clutch and start bolting it back together. In your belt cover, there's gonna be some debris to clean up. You have to clean all that stuff up. Uh, clean it with like brake parts cleaner. You gotta be careful with the outer powder coat surface. Always want to check that bearing. It's in good shape, it turns really smooth. But sometimes when they shred the belts, it leaves a lot of debris behind. I'm going to get that all cleaned out. And there's the circlip that uh, retains that, that bearing. I'm not going to change that out today. It's still in good shape. All right, so like I said, with the broken belt, you have all this good stuff left behind. Um, you can use like a paintbrush, a dry paintbrush to brush it out or cheat how the compressed air. I don't want to breathe the, uh, all the lovely stuff that's going to come off this, but kind of got a mouth. Get rid of that stuff. Whatever this is, Kevlar fiber. Uh, one thing to check when you have a broken belt, or just any time, these, these oil seals, sometimes they'll wrap up some of the belt filament into the seal and it'll damage the seal and you'll, it may start to leak. Uh, both these seals are replaceable. This one's easy to replace you know, by prying it out. This one, you have to pull this whole entire timing cover off. And there's three screws and these special pulls you know, that yank that out. Um, if you pull that timing cover off, you want to replace the O-ring and the seal. 
Uh, it's a little difficult to get the seal passes. Piaggio does have a special tool for putting that together, but you could certainly do it without if you're a pretty confident home mechanic and tackled popping seals in. It shouldn't be too difficult. Haven't really seen any issues with these, but just pointing out, you know, something to keep in mind. The last, last thing is the bubble. You know, it's not really part of the belt service, but I know this is pretty full. Um, might as well take care of it. Like I said, this bike's written on the freeway. You can kind of just twist it off. You don't even need a tool to take that off. If it is pretty tight, you know, you could use a needle nose. And I'm going to leave that there. It doesn't look like it's too full. I thought it would be dripping right out of there. There's a little bit in there. Might drip a couple times and put that back before I put the belt cover in. Oh, there we go. I got a drip forming. All right, first thing I start with freshening up the variator and replacing the rollers. I uh, got the two parts. You know, you got your rollers that I stated I was going to reuse. They're still in good shape. I'll show you those are brand new rollers and also how the stock rollers go in. Uh, I got the fixed half drive pulley. And this is the movable half driven pulley or the variator as it's commonly referred to. Um, you got the two surfaces that ride the belt. Since we're putting a new belt in, you want to scuff up the, uh, the surfaces that ride on the belt. And I got 60 grit right here, and I already cut them into little uh, squares here. I have it like that in the shop. They're always like available, so it's nice and handy. Kind of just makes everything a little more efficient around here by having cut little squares. And I tend to just kind of want to rotate. You don't need to go too crazy. It's pretty much just to break the glazed kind of aluminum surface on these pulleys. So it's kind of got a nice, nice little finish to it. Same goes right here. Doesn't need much. I'm just going at it, kind of rotating the clutch, give it a nice even kind of surface to break up the, um, the glaze on there. Next, you want to clean up all the parts. Uh, normally, I do this in a parts washer, but I'm going to do this kind of how the home home mechanic would do it. I want to have brake parts cleaner, put gloves on them. I mean, this stuff's solvent, so it's not stuff you really want to play with. Uh, you got this. Uh, the pin that slides in there it tends to want to build up some residue. You should have safety glasses on. This stuff kind of sprays all over the place. is isn't fun to get into your eyes. So pretty much all you got to do is wipe that residue off. You can see it came right off on the rag. This thing looks perfect. There's no scores in it. Check that right when I took it all apart. It was all in good shape. Uh, all this stuff, you know, you can wipe out this, uh, this bushing right here. Use a uh, brake cleaner to kind of clean the mess out of the, um, the pulley. You know, that's just dust from those, the roller weights wearing out. So that's, you let that dry or use compressed air. Clean that one up. Not much that you need to do on the other side there. So that's cleaned up. This is cleaned up. Dried out, wipe it a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and assemble this. Got my fresh rag right there. Um, if you're putting the stock rollers back in, they look different on both sides. And the, the reason they, they're different is the thrusting surface has more material on it. So they wear, they actually, they last a little longer than the low C ones. Um, but they're heavier weight. They're more tuned for um, having quiet, you know, efficient, operation versus performance. So most customers opt to go for the Melosi ones when I suggest that you could put them in. So, but when you put these style original weights in, they have the open side. That's usually a painted metal slug. All, I always think of the word like open clockwise. So if you're looking down on the variator, the open side goes clockwise. So it'd go like right like that. So you can see the closed end is if you're looking down at it, it's on the left side, open ends on the right side or clockwise. But I'm putting the Melosi ones back in. They're all pretty clean, very minimal flat spots. I tend to uh, put the writing on the uh, clockwise facing surface. I don't think it really matters with these because they can go in either way, dropping those in. There's also sliders. They're a little unique how they're installed. Um, I don't know. I think we might have a video where we installed sliders on one of the bikes. They work, work well, but my opinion is they're not all that. I see them wear out just as well. Um, 
these little slide bushings. You know, I tend to just replace them every time. Just they're very inexpensive. You know, they do wear a little bit. So you got two different sides. It won't slide on that way. You slide on like this. And this is the ramp plate right here for the rollers that go against. So you slide all those in and this should just drop right in. If it binds up, you might need to uh, file the insides of these. But generally these fit pretty nice. There's not much wear. It will always have a little bit of slop. You can kind of see just that little bit of play. That's normal. So flip this variator over. You got the, um, this thing, the, the bushing or whatever you call it, the boss, uh, whatever I want to call it today. Um, you can go in either way. You can kind of usually see the area that has like a little bit more like rust on it, usually is the one that's against the ramp plate. That drops right in. And I'm supporting it by the ramp plate, because otherwise if I let go of this, it's gonna fall apart. So I'm holding it, you know, kind of giving it a pinch. You know, sometimes I'll put my finger, now I can hold it and it won't fall apart. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Still pinching the variator so it's not falling apart. Kind of line that up and just carefully slide the whole assembly on. And you see the same amount of splines are exposed as when I took it off. Kind of keep a note of that, because sometimes I see where they don't seat. Everything went back together, rollers didn't fall out. Just a simple little way of holding it. Don't have any issues putting that back in. All right, on the driven pulley and clutch assembly, you got this outer clutch bell and these centrifugal weights make contact to the surface in here. Uh, this one's pretty clean there, but you want to scuff up that surface. You know, this is with the, I'm not, I'm reusing the clutch. It's still in good shape, but this kind of helps smoothen out the action of the clutch, you know, when you give it a new surface to bite into. Again, you don't need to go too crazy with it. Um, the Piaggio book has all these measurements for these clutch bells. I've never really seen one warped or worn out ever. The only times I ever see them damaged is when people completely abuse the clutch and overheat them. They're all discolored discolored and all messed up and usually that's all a melted mess. This this part lasts you know pretty much as far as I'm concerned the life of the bike you know I don't really see them wear out but we do have available if you want to buy one or need one because the clutch has been abused. Spray it with a little brake cleaner clean that out that's done. Now we're going into the fun part the driven pulley. Um, it's retained by this single nut up here you got the clutch shoes, there's three of them. Some scooter designs use five. I've even seen scooters that use two. You could see this black material right there. That's the friction material. The service limit on the smallest part of it would be one millimeter thick. Um, I'm not gonna even bother measuring it. I can tell that's like three millimeters, you know, something like that. It's not far off from when it was brand new. They're in perfect, perfectly good shape. Why everything's still dirty, go in there and scuff this up. The reasons you want to replace this clutch uh, assembly prematurely is possibly it leaked all the grease or oil contaminated these shoes. Clutches don't work all that well when the shoes are all contaminated. But just give it a little scuff. Don't need to do much with it. You can blow it out with compressed air or when you have the whole thing apart, you can clean, you could spray it out with um, brake cleaner. I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, we're going to take this apart, get the rest of this belt out. Um, when you release these clutches, you kind of put your pawns right here, and it's kind of like a little steering wheel down here. So I'm, I'm using my, both my fingers and turning it clockwise. And the belt's stuck in there. See, I just pulled it right out. But I'm going to take this all the way apart, make sure there's no filament stuck of this old belt in the um, driven pulley seals. So I see a lot of people replace a belt after they break their belt like this, and all of a sudden you get grease contaminating your clutch and the new belt. And I'll show you next what's in there and what you need to change out. Here at my workshop, I have the factory Piaggio tool that used to take this clutch assembly apart. Uh, for the home shade tree mechanic or just the occasional, you know, do-it-yourselfer kind of person, there's no need to have an expensive tool like this. I don't even know what this costs. It's probably like a couple hundred bucks. It's amazing what the factory tools cost. Um, the only thing you are going to need to take this apart is an impact socket, you know, to take this all apart. Uh, keep in mind, if it's not leaking grease and you didn't have a broken belt, there's not really a need to take this apart. Or, you know, just check the motion of it. This thing, it still works perfectly mechanically. Just kind of, it's got a real smooth 
ramping, kind of twist ramping motion and that's normal. So I don't suspect any mechanical issues with this. I just want to replace the seals and put new grease in it. Plus I want to show you how it's all done. So put the thing on the ground right here. You would definitely want to wear a safety glass. It's a pretty dangerous uh, way of taking these apart. This is the way you do it without the tools. This is, I've never had any other, you know, it's quicker than using the factory tool, but this thing's never been apart. So I'm going to um, mark it since we're not going to use a torque wrench to uh, put it back together. So I'm going to mark the position of the clutch, the position of the nut. There's no reason, you know, that wasn't, it was not correct, correctly torqued from the beginning. Uh, I got a 34 millimeter socket to take this apart. It's a big, huge socket. You know, like the auto parts store, this is going to be like a front wheel drive axle socket. You don't need to buy some crazy socket set to take, take this part. And you don't need a fancy uh, impact gun. You know, a basic impact gun would be more than enough to take this large nut off. It's not under all that much torque. But I have that in reverse. You don't want to go to town. This thing will explode if you just take it apart right now. I'm going to get some pressure on it. I have my two shoes on there. Oops, doesn't help letting go of that two shoes on there. The nut is loose. It's not under that much spring tension, but it's enough for it to go flying. So if you saw that whole motion, I just used my, my shoes to kind of help me um, hold it down. A little safer than getting your hands in there. So still got the mark on the clutch, the mark on this nut here. Got the nut, the clutch. Here's another reason I want to take this apart, clean all this extra uh, belt debris out of here so it's not in my belt cover. You got this uh, protector here. It kind of keeps the, uh, the seals protected from the buildup. So that's on the top. And then you got this spring. And over time, when you end up with a broken belt on a high miles bike, I would check the spring. This is the sole purpose of the spring is it keeps the tension on the belt. And it, it kind of regulates the uh, the, the load against the, uh, the variator. So in some performance setups, you'd ideally put a stiffer spring or a different spring rate to kind of change the characteristics of the variator and also put more tension on the belt. Um, the service limit for this uh, spring is, I think it's 106 millimeters. Um, and this isn't really the best way to do it, but you do, you pretty much would put it you know, on a table or something and have a flat edge if you want to get a really accurate measurement. Uh, it comes in right around 108.56 millimeters. It's still within the service limit and I wouldn't suspect any issues considering this bike only has around 7,000 miles on it. So here's the, the movable driven pulley right here and it slides up and down. You can really feel the motion. A lot of people don't know how these work. They kind of twist they kind of have a helical motion to them. And it's the way it's all designed inside here. And when we get apart, you'll see it all. And you can even see some of the grease is starting to leak out of this. Got this little spacer here. This is a, um, like a Teflon washer that allows a spring to twist. So you got all those parts. We'll leave those off right now and see if I can get this off by hand. Yep, just took a little twist. Sometimes they're stuck on there quite a bit. You might need a, a flat screwdriver to carefully pry that off. So I'm going to slowly pull that off. This little sleeve comes off. And in there, you could see the motion of those uh, pins and the oozing grease as well. All right, I'm going to get the four pins out. And they just pull right out. I'm kind of holding the ramp open a little bit. They should all come out of this like gooey, greasy, um, contraption of whatever it is. Those pins, there's a little bit more to them than just um, than just the, the rollers, a pin and a little roller. And right now they're all greasy. I'm going to take them all apart. I don't need to show you how I'm going to clean them. Anybody that gets this clutch as far knows how to clean parts. Pretty much you can do it with brake cleaner and a rag or in a parts washer. Now that all those eight parts are out, this will pull right off. And again, it's kind of a gooey mess as well. This is your fixed half driven pulley and it doesn't have much grease on it. There is some grease that's retained on the other side of this tube right here. A couple things to check. You want to see this surface looks good. Uh, looks perfect. You could scuff that up with the sandpaper if you like. Generally don't have too many issues with these steel sleeves. 
if the scooter makes a lot of noise when it's just idling from the, uh, the clutch, sometimes it's not necessarily a clutch, it could be these freewheel bearings. And these still spin quite smooth. You could replace these freewheel bearings, but I'll tell you, it's quite a difficult job for a home mechanic, and this part isn't all that expensive. And if you buy it from the factory, it includes the bearings already installed. And this side's a needle bearing. When we put this all back together, I'll, I'll put some fresh grease in there. And I just, I won't go to, to the effort of uh, cleaning this all out with a uh, brake cleaner, but I just wipe out some of the old grease the best you can. Try not to contaminate the surface the, ri the belt rides on. Just wipe it off, and I would call that clean enough. For the movable half, there's gonna be two oil seals, and generally these are what start leaking this oil out, and you end up running this all dry. If it's run dry too long, you end up damaging this whole part, all those, those pins, and even sometimes this part. Uh, this one still had quite a bit of grease in there, not really an issue. Like I said, the only reason I'm taking this one apart is because it had a broken belt. I just wanna check all this stuff out and replace these seals because they tend to uh, get contaminated with the belt filament. Stick a flat screwdriver under there, just give it a little twist, and the little seals will pop right out. And they're identical on each side. Those seals will not get reused. There's O-rings buried in there. They're both identical. Again, you use a flat screwdriver, whatever, cutter, whatever you want to pry them out. Not much to it. This, this part, you want to go uh, take a little further with cleaning it. You know, wipe out as much grease as you can. Then I'll go in there with a um, brake cleaner, clean that all out a little bit better so it'll be perfectly clean. So come back to this. We're going to put it all back together. I have all these parts clean. All right, so I got all parts all cleaned up. Last little bit of cleaning. Just wiping it all out. No grease on that new surface. All this is all clean. I'm going to put the new seals in. Um, got the two new O-rings and I have the two new seals right there. I also have a wood block. Kind of makes the job a little easier. Um, also want to have grease. Ignore the service use only sticker. That's how we have inventory control here. But uh, we sell this grease. I think it's just the part number of grease. Works pretty good, it's good stuff. I always use it on the barriers. It works better than the factory specified stuff, in my opinion. So you grease up the little uh, seals. Um, there's two ways this goes in. It's got like a little groove. The groove always faces down and towards the middle of the barrier. And I kind of dropped it into the groove. Sometimes you can just push them in. And sometimes they're stubborn. So, you know, that one I got partly in. You can just carefully tap that in with a mallet. You don't want to distort the seal. If you're having troubles and it's starting to distort the seal, your best bet would be to drive the, um, the seal in with the wood block side. Got to be careful, got a little grease there. So that, that seals in, no big deal. Again, do this. You're going to uh, inevitably get a little bit of grease on the surface you don't want to. Wipe my hands off, but you got to grease these seals up when you install them. So give it a shot, see if this one will go in by hand. See how they just kind of want to level out. Using my fingers, it's most of the way in. Just needs a couple little taps. You know, you don't need any sort of um, seal driver, but you know, set, tap it in there. Kind of make sure it's even. Looks like it's even all the way around. It's good enough. So the seal's in there. It's not going anywhere. Flip the barrier back over. Put the O-rings in the groove like that. Don't stretch these O-rings out too much because they tend to um, once they're stretched out. They're kind of difficult to um, put, put all back together. All right, so I got my fixed half sitting right here, all cleaned up, ready to go. Um, technically, there's a, well, I don't know. There's a special tool that's a seal protector. I noticed with these, um, the three valve engines, they also have a little ramp. It tends not to really damage the seals. On many other models, you have to, um, wrap this with tape or use the seal protector. I think in some of my videos you've seen, you can see I have a, a special seal protector. You know, either use the seal protector or I use tape. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this on, take a small amount of grease and just wipe that all in there. Again, you don't wanna 
try not to get too much where it's going to go on to the um, surface of this. And then I'm going to put a real small amount of grease on this edge here. You know, again, that, that's, that grease is going to get wiped down and inevitably it might go on a belt. A little bit's okay, but definitely don't want a lot. So kind of carefully walk this on. And this is the critical seal here. Sometimes this seal, you got to just carefully work it on there, you know, without the seal protectors. It kind of wants to hang up the lip. And if you're having troubles, if you're having troubles, you could use a, a, a pick and just carefully walk the lip of the seal around the thing. There's a little bit of grease to kind of keep the seal lip lubricated. You don't want to damage the, the lip or cut it of any sort, but pretty much, you know, kind of get it in there. It takes a little bit of effort to get it past that, that little edge there. And we'll give it a shot. Worst thing that happens is usually we'll just pop the seal out like that. And if that's the case, another way to go about this is just, you know, walk the seal right around the thing. You know, the whole key is not to damage the seal. You don't want to kill the lip on the seal. So I, I went ahead and walked this, the seal on there. And that, it's sliding up and down just fine. Didn't, didn't hurt the lip. And I can use my nails, press that back in, and use a, the butt of a, a pick, pop that back into place. You know, a couple ways to be creative with this. Whenever you don't have the factory tools, you know, if I was doing this in my shop setting, I'd thread the little adapter on there and this thing would go together in like two seconds, you know. But just showing you how to do it without all the tools, you know, that aren't necessarily available easily to the general public that works on these scooters, you know, home mechanics. So, so wipe in the excess grease off there. And be careful not to pull that off. You might see a small amount of grease in the groove. You can wipe that out. It looks pretty clean there. You see these pinholes all lined up all the way around on all four. So next, I'm going to go ahead and wipe these complete wells with grease. Fill the well all the way up. Get a roller. Get a pin, drop the pin on the roller, and kind of bury it in the grease where it ends up landing in the, um, the hole. And you might need to rock the variator a little bit. Another, another um, idea here is just go ahead and install one in the dry, you know, in the dry state. And that kind of helps its key the whole, whole assembly. So then you can kind of wiggle the other ones right in. So there you go, got that one in. I wiped the grease over it. It's not going anywhere because there's grease in it. The dry one just popped out, no big deal. And pretty much repeat this four times. And I'll go ahead and use that one that was just dropped out. We probably don't need to video all of it, but. All right, last one. So now that you got that all assembled and all these wells packed with grease, kind of wiped off the excess grease with my gloves, do it with a paper towel, whatever. Go ahead and put the sleeve on. The sleeve, you want to wipe a real thin layer of grease in there. Um, make sure the pins, I'm going to support this whole thing from this because if I push it down, it's going to push all the grease out. And it's that simple. Drop that right on, went out right over those brand new O-rings. All the grease is sealed in there, so I'm going to wipe all the excess grease off. We don't need any of that extra grease. Keep in mind I have my black mark from where we'll tighten the nut. Don't want to wipe that off. It definitely is a little smoother. You don't hear that kind of gurgling grease noise as much as when it was um, 
prior to me taking it apart. Take a, uh, they have like a speck, I think it's like six grams of grease that you put in. It's like, oh, I don't know how you measure that, you know? It's like, I already packed those wells. You just take a real small amount of grease and go ahead and pack the needle bearing. The other bearing that's further in there is a fully sealed bearing, you know? But just pretty much pack that in there. You don't want to pack it so, if you have too much grease, it's likely to leak out. But there's just a small amount of grease. I don't know if the camera gets it. But the needle bearing's been re-greased. Re it's good to go. All right, go, go ahead and assemble this, this tensioning spring and the clutch. Uh, you got the Teflon washer. Drop that on. Don't need to grease it. And then you have this little ring here. And that ring is what slides around. The spring is identical, both, both sides. Just go ahead and drop that on. We're reusing it because it's within specification as we measured. I have my mark on the very top up here. And I have my mark on the clutch that I made the first step. And then I have my nut that's ready to go. Um, if you just want to be cautious, because you're unsure what the torque, you know, since we're just torquing it back to the same, you know, rotation as the original factory torquing, yeah, because you need the, the factory tool to um, technically torque it to the, the spec. It's pretty difficult to hold this and torque it to the, um, I think it's like 35 foot-pounds, something like that. Um, get in there. Be careful this doesn't fly in your, your face. So get my knee on there. Or you could use your shoes like how I took it apart. And I'm carefully holding that. And go ahead and spin this on. Make sure it doesn't cross thread. It's very easy to cross thread this. So that's mostly on there. So it's safe. I'm going to go tighten it. Um, and just a little bit more. And those marks are pretty much all lined up. So it's, you know, as far as the rotation is torqued to where it was left off from the factory. So that feels good. We're going to put this all back into uh, the bike. Scoot's going to be good to go. All right, so I have my brand new original Piaggio belt, part number B016183. Physically, or the physical size is identical to the old uh, Vespa LX and ET4 belt used on the Leader 150 motor. Um, there are some differences on how they build the belt, and that's why a different part number um, than that original belt. Melosi also makes a belt, but it's the same belt that you'd use for the, um, the ET4 LX, all those 125, 150 motors. So I went ahead and popped the label off, don't want to really put it together. You see there's some arrows on this original belt. So the motor is going like this, counterclockwise. So this is what I'll do is I'm going to get my hands under here, kind of steer this thing like the steering wheel, and get the See, I just used my fingers and kind of grabbed the belt and got that in there. And now that I got that, I'm still holding it, kind of just like keeping some pressure. Now I'm holding it. That's where you want the belt, like about a third of the way buried into this very fully. You don't want it at the edge. Very important that you get it this, this position right here. And if you just watch my motion right there, that's how you go about getting the belt in that position. Got the driven pulley clutch assembly, still holding the belt, making sure it doesn't slip up and out of that pulley and still holding it. See, I'm still holding it up here. Kind of got my hand right there. You want to have all your pulleys ready to go, your washers. This is your a little bit smaller washer that will fit over the splines. You got your pulley. Again, we have those all uh, scuffed up. You got your flat washer that I wrote inside on. I don't know if it helps anybody. This one, that's the critical one that has, um, which way it goes, has the outside marked on it. You got the nut, go on either way, but I tend to like to install them the same way they came off. Um, you can put Loctite on this if you're uh, unsure or may think it wants to back out. So pretty much just tighten that by hand, let go of the belt, you're fine. And the belt will tension itself on its own. You don't need to mess with it. Kind of looks kind of loose right there. No big deal. Make sure there's no grease on this. Go ahead and put your clutch bell on. 
big mistake I've seen people do is they put the whole clutch together or the whole belt cover together, forget to put the clutch belt on. And the instant you start it, the clutch explodes. They don't survive an accident like that. Go ahead and install the tool. I don't know if I have this in the right position, but I'm gonna wing it. And I've found that you can just hand tighten these. If you're unsure, go, you can go in there, get a five millimeter Allen and tighten them. And that's in there tight enough. Get your torque wrench. Set it to 62 foot pounds. I mean, you don't necessarily need one this fancy. Sometimes the digital one kind of sucks. It takes batteries and you got to poke at buttons. Not as fast as the mechanical ones in some, some regards. A 56. There you go, 60, almost 62 right there. That's good enough. Got my clutch uh, cover ready. Make sure your uh, wire and your boots out of the way. And be careful putting this in. You don't want to be damaging your paint finish. Give it a couple, couple nice little love taps. And we'll start putting the, all the screws in. Kind of the best thing to do with these screws, if you're unfamiliar, is just go ahead and put them all in place and just give them about a three quarters of a turn to get them all started. Yeah, this is the hose. And now I'm kind of rushing at the job. Sometimes uh, I'll have fasteners that are kind of rusty. I'll put the rusty ones so you don't see them in the nice ones over here. Another option is we sell these in stainless. You could uh, get the whole stainless steel uh, Allen set. They're pretty nice. I'm gonna set the clutch real low on this for the first round. So now I'm kind of going back and forth. Yeah. This makes the job a lot quicker, having... The clutch was set real light, you know, for the first, first torque. And this one, not using a power tool on it. Let's get in there, get that one and just snug it, that's all you need. Seven foot pounds if you were gonna use a torque wrench and get that critical on it. Got the washer, the nut. Here's a trick, go backwards on the tire. That's tight enough. Install your ETC or the, the clutch holding tool. Turn my torque wrench on. I'm gonna set this to 45. I didn't even set it. I'm just gonna watch the digital display on it. Right there, 45. And you can see some even wrote on the, the, the tool right there. Got this little guy. If any of these tabs are broken, this one's still hanging in there. It's got one little tab busted. You can replace this if you want. Same with the rubber parts that they're worn out. This one's holding in there just fine. I'm gonna leave it, leave it to be there. You got this boot. The way I like to do this boot, is um, go ahead and get it on before you uh, put this little cover on there. Get a zip tie. Have all that stuff right there. It's one zip tie. And if you were gonna be stingy and don't wanna put a new zip tie, technically you could just leave this thing hanging, unbolt it and leave the zip tie there. But ah, what's the zip tie cost? Nothing, so. Get the cover lined up. Two screws, get a Torx driver. I ain't chucking up to the power tool yet. Just taking the bit, just, I don't know, it's whatever's handy, I just do what I can do quick. But you gotta remember, I did that, gotta go back there and torque it, so maybe it was just better to bring out the tool to begin with. Doesn't need to be that tight, I'm just doing it with a hand driver there. You have this little guy double check your ground connection. You gotta make sure that ground connection is connected. You have all sorts of problems if that's not connected. Uh, go ahead and drop the air box down. And one thing when you're tightening these screws, you don't wanna go to town and tighten them all the way. You kinda gotta um, get them in the wells and kinda you know, massage them in. See, I am kinda gave the uh, air box a little wiggle and make sure it caught the clip from the backside. Cause sometimes those clips get damaged or if they're real rusty. So I didn't, I didn't go ahead and tighten them all the way. Yeah. 
I'm just spinning with this little bit right here. Come back with a hand driver. And snug, like just go as snug as you can do without the, um, the bit camming out. The whole idea of Phillips is it cams out, which is kind of like a torque limiting function of a Phillips. And this little guy, pop that on and voila, done. Let's see if it works. All right, so belt's all installed. Um, sometimes they'll make a funky little noise when they first start. And sometimes they'll slip just a little bit when they first start. Uh, don't be alarmed, try riding around for a mile, and if anything's wrong or doesn't feel right, you might have to take it back apart and figure out what's going on. I don't suspect any issues here, let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and start it. Uh, no problems. That feels good, so. Alright, so hopefully that was the most comprehensive uh, belt video that you can have for the new style Vespa Piaggio 3 valve 125-150 motor. Thanks for watching my videos. Uh, check out all the other cool videos we got, all the cool accessories we got, and see you next time. Scoot on.